In this video, I'm going to do a quick head-to-head -head audio comparison between the Blue Yeti mic against my new Shure SM7B microphone. I'll switch the audio between the two mics and put something on the screen so you can see or hear which one you're listening to throughout this video. Quick disclaimer, I have purchased both mics with my own money. This video isn't sponsored and I don't get anything free from it. I just wanted to see how they compare against each other. So maybe you will learn something along the way with me. And what else? The Blue Yeti mic gain is set to zero or its lowest position. And it's being recorded into my computer with Audacity. The SM7B is going directly into my C100 XLR's input port. It's set to about six out of 10 on the gain dial. And usually I would do um, some audio processing, but in this case, I'll leave it as bare as possible. And I'll just normalize both of the audio tracks to 23 LUFS. And also just to mention my room isn't treated. So there's a lot of um, bare hard surfaces. The Godox light that I use do have fans in them as well. So they're not super quiet. With that being said, here's a quick intro about the Blue Yeti microphone. I have owned the Yeti for nearly a decade now and I have always liked the way it sounds. It has a multi-polar pattern setting that you can change with the dial at the back. It's a condenser USB mic that costs around £120 here in the UK or about $160. At one point, this mic seemed to be the most popular mic on YouTube, uh, but nowadays it seems to be the Shure SM7B that's getting all the spotlight. So I really wanted to find out how it compares. This one costs about 390 pounds or about 400 US dollars. It's a XLR dynamic microphone that is famous for being very quiet. Normally I would use my Tascam DR60D recorder or the DBX286S to provide some more preamp gain for this mic. But for this test, I want to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm feeding it directly into the camera itself. So why did I choose to buy this mic then? There are a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, I wanted something that can go straight into the camera uh, without having to sync the audio file in post. So hopefully it will speed up my video production process. Secondly, I wanted something that would reject more background noise. As mentioned, this room isn't treated and there's like the fan noises from the light. So hopefully it will keep it nice and quiet, but you can probably hear the difference between the mic. And reason number three is I wanted a darker mic. I mean the look of the mic itself. This silver chrome Blue Yeti uh, tends to mess up my exposure quite a lot when I'm filming. It's just a minor issue that sort of bothers me. It's obviously, it doesn't affect the audio quality itself and the top priority should be the audio quality, of course, but this is just something that I prefer this matte black over this chrome silver version. Although everyone's voice is different and this mic tends to be quite warm or dark in terms of the tone, I have yet to see a bad review for the SM7B on the internet. I was really curious to find out myself if this is true and if it's actually suitable for my particular voice. I don't sing or play any guitar, etc., so I won't be doing any of those kind of tests in this video. I just need a good mic that has good background rejection for my YouTube talking videos or maybe even podcasts. For anyone out there with a super hearing, you might have noticed the noise coming from the SM7B when compared to the Blue Yeti. If we look at the comparison between the Yeti and the SM7B practical noise floor, you can see that the Yeti is a lot quieter when normalized in terms of background noise. The Shure is famous for its quiet output, so it's not really a big surprise to be honest. Like I said, I have the Tascam and the DBX that I would normally use, which helps to eliminate some of the hissing noise. And I have a fed head on order, which I will cover in a future video. You know the drill, subscribe if you want to find out and not to miss it, etc. So what do you think of the audio? Which one do you prefer out of these two? Honestly, hearing these two side by side, ignoring the short noisy hissing sound, which I know I can fix with other gears or in post, whatever, 
I'm a little bit disappointed, shall we say, or amazed by the fact that the Blue Yeti still sounds really good to this day. You would think that spending like 400 pounds on a mic, it would sound like significantly better. But by the time you added a decent recorder or a uh, good audio interface with a clean gain, the price really does add up quite significantly beyond the mic itself, as well as the extra XLR cable. If it was purely for the sound, I think I like the Yeti more especially for the price. But as mentioned for me, because I want to feed the audio directly into the camera going forward uh, when I'm making these video, I wanted a different look as well. So I think I'll be keeping the SM7B going forward. I've used the Yeti for nearly 10 years now. Hopefully this expensive SM7B will last maybe 10, 20 or 30 years. In that case, probably the price doesn't matter too much by the time we average it out or stretch it out in the long run. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you found it useful in some way. As mentioned, I'll be doing some more testing with the SM7B going forward with the DBX as well as the Tascam recorder, plus the FET head that I recently ordered, so I'm waiting for that to arrive. And finally, I also got a new camera recently that I'm excited to play around with and to share with you guys soon. Until next time, my name is Joe and thank you very much for watching.